Welcome Cheryl Kara to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Awesome to be here. Of course. So today I have you as a health coach and an integrative health practitioner. Can you maybe go into what that means? I know a health coach is pretty intuitive, but integrative health practitioner, it could be a mouthful, but in your own words, can you explain what that is and how you help the world? Yes, absolutely. So an integrative, so integrative health practitioner is a certification through a Dr. Stephen Cabral um, in the US, and he's really brought together Western and Eastern approaches from a health perspective and functional medicine, etc. So it's all about getting to the root cause of symptoms that people have in their, like what they're experiencing in their bodies. And like the foundational protocol is really, it's called the de-stress protocol. And it's, you know, it's all the traditional lifestyle factors that you would think about when it comes to health. So it's diet, exercise, stress management, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, supplementation and success mindset. So that's what kind of spells out de-stress. And that's really what I work with people on to get them to achieve their health goals. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it in in a nutshell. And when people become a coach, whether it be a health coach, a money coach, whatever it be, they always have a story. And I always find that the story is interesting because not every story is the same. Why a health coach? Why not a nutritionist or something else, right? We chose health. So is there a reason behind that? Or is there a special story that you can tell that kind of led you down this path? Yeah, absolutely. So I have always been very interested in health and well-being. You know, when I came out of school, you know, I'm from South Africa and you kind of choose careers or studies based on what you're good at at school. So I started off, you know, we were chatting before we started off both in the same field. I'm a chartered accountant and went down this path of chartered accountancy, banking, um, but it, it wasn't ever something that lit me up. And I was always looking for something, something else that gave me more, more meaning. And when I had my daughter, um, when I was on maternity leave, I studied my personal training qualification. And although I love exercise, I just didn't feel the calling to actually make that a career. And then a very sad thing happened in my life. And one of my best friends who I thought was healthy was diagnosed with bowel cancer and passed away three months later. And that really got me thinking around my understanding of what health is and made me challenge that understanding and then fast forward to when I was on maternity leave with my son it was like I really need to feel like I'm empowered with the right information to make healthy choices for my family and so I wanted to do some more studying so I signed up for the Institute of Integrative Nutrition Health Coaching Certification And then from that, I was introduced to Dr. Stephen Cabral and then did the uh, integrative health practitioner certification after that. And that's, you know, after doing that and really understanding why people end up in a disease state, like they're all of these root cause factors, you know, it's, it's making a wrong choices from a dietary perspective It's being exposed to all the toxins that we are exposed to in the world. But it's also these limiting beliefs that people have around, you know, their own, where they are in the world that actually cause a lot of stress in their system. You know, it's, it's never just the diet or the exercise. It's the whole, it's the holistic approach. And that's why I really resonated with health coaching and this integrative health practitioner certification approach, because we need to optimize all of those lifestyle factors in order to be truly healthy. So that's kind of where I where I've landed. And through my own experience, personally, at a hormonal level, you know, so I'm now 42. And what I've realized is that there's this real shift in a woman's hormones and sense of self can be as early from the age of 35. um, And it's called the perimenopause transition. Through my own experience, I'm now focusing on supporting women in this life phase because it can be very traumatic and it can be very confronting because you don't feel like you're in touch with your body anymore, but mm. it actually can be a wonderful transition if you know how to adapt your lifestyle. So that's kind of now where I've landed with you know my, my passion and my real focus now. When a person starts to look at their health, whether it be their mind, their body, 
whatever it be, when they're looking at their health as a total package? Do you think it's something that people wait until a trauma happens or they have a heart attack or they look in the mirror and they say, I'm not happy with how I look? Or do you think it's more of a society thing that they look at what society says that they should be and they try to mimic that? I think it depends on somebody's like internal motivators. I think a lot of the people who come to me are have waited for something to happen in their body that they are they've reached a point of I'm no longer comfortable tolerating this thing. A lot of the women who come to me it's around weight gain, you know, or there's, you know, I've been bloated and having the runs for 10 years. And I've reached a point of I'm no longer willing to tolerate it. So that's really the people that I attract. But to your point, it could be, you know, particularly with women from a weight side of things, they may be seeing all the social media stuff coming at them and they look at their own bodies and they're like, well, I'm not like that. So I need to, you know, eat less. I need somebody to show me how I can reach that body type. I would say the coaching process is all very much the same, like whatever the driver is for somebody reaching out for help, there will very much be a mindset component of that. But it's just like where that comes from, I guess, differs based on somebody's motivators. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that because my motivator might be different than someone else's motivator. And it's not that my motivator is better or your motivator is worse. It's just that we have different ways of thinking. And mm. we have embodied wisdom and that's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for everyone else. There's a saying that you should never judge a person until you walk a mile in their shoes. It's like if someone walked a mile in my shoes, they would see all the stress, all the problems, all the work that I do. At the same time, I'm not going to look at someone else that might appear to have a wonderful and easy life and say, wow, like that, you know, they have an amazing life. I wish I had that life, but we don't see behind the pictures. Sometimes health is behind that picture where we don't pay attention to our body, to our mind. And until something is broken, people don't really necessarily pay attention. I know for you, when you got to a certain point, you started to realize your body was changing, correct? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once that happened, did you associate that with like a trauma or just something that you wanted to change and adjust because it wasn't making you happy or fulfilled in life? So mine was actually um, like a strange turn of events. Have you heard of the Peely device? It does like bioresonance body scans based on a, a picture of your face. What had happened to me is, so this is when I was still working in, in banking and I'd had a terrible time, like very, you know, so I was in a leadership position working a full-time job and three days a week with two young kids, my son who was sleeping terribly without management support in the bank. So I was just, I got into a place of complete burnout where I was, you know, highly anxious, doubting myself, like just very emotional, like just very, very much not myself. You know, I just happened to have this, um, a chat with a fellow health coach and she's like, I've got this Healy device, you know, do you want me to run a scan on you? And she ran the scan on me, out popped the word menopause on the scan. And this was when I was 41. I was like, what on earth? I'm like, please, can you run the scan on me again? Because I don't understand why this word is coming up. I'm only 41. What does this mean? She did it again and I popped the same word. And then I started to go down this, you know, path of understanding where I was in relation to this hormonal transition. And I realized even through my studies that there isn't a lot of focus on this life phase for women. And actually, where your body has been under significant stress, pretty much to the lead up to your 40s, that you can start to experience the severe symptoms of perimenopause um, much earlier on. And that can result in reduced res um, tolerance for stress, mm. you know, feeling that you are like more anxious and brain fog. Like there's all of these things. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense you know after having kids later in life it depletes your body you know so I had my son when I was 39 and it really depletes your body then you add on a whole lot of excess stress from poor sleep we'd had an international trip that although it was amazing it was very depleting for all of us because of the jet lag and you know and then you have all the toxic pressure 
and stress at work. And it was just a perfect storm for me. So I would say that at that point in time, I wasn't, I didn't have the education around the, like the perimenopausal shift, even though I was a health coach and, you know, my, my in-depth studies, particularly in this area now, like gives me what I need to bring this to life for other women. And secondly, I think you just get caught up and you start to normalize your own experience. You know, your comment earlier around, we have this inbuilt wisdom. I think when we are so out of balance, we lose touch with the inner wisdom that we have, realizing that this is not normal to feel this way. You know, I just started to, my husband would just say to me, he's like, you, like you're not fun anymore. Like, where's, where's the joy? Like, where's, where have you gone? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I just don't know where I've gone. And actually it was just like my stress bucket was just, totally overflowing and I just normalized my own experience so you know that's actually the name of my business my business is your tiny voice health coaching because one of my objectives is to educate and empower the people that I work with to be able to return to the inner wisdom as an ultimate goal when we look at education certifications uh, coaching there's never an end even when I think I'm at the point, it's like, okay, I read enough books, I got enough certifications and education. There's always something we can learn, whether that be from our own teachings, our own learning, our own experiences, or from someone else. And I find that both are very valuable because we can learn from other people quicker than if we just did everything ourselves. It's similar to how if you had a large project, if you had a team working on that project, it's going to be quicker maybe even smoother if everyone was going to be proficient and all for the project's completion. Sometimes you might get an outlier or someone who's not really a good worker, but that's just kind of here or there. But when we get into coaching and to change, and then we look at the different genders, men have a more difficult time really looking at themselves and saying, okay, something's wrong in my life. I find that women do a better job at this and can really look at and say, hey, something is wrong. I don't know what is wrong, but I need some help. I need some assistance. Sometimes people don't even know what the next step is. And I remember when I was in my 20s and I needed help. It was just like, what do I do? Only thing I can think of was I need to figure it out myself. I did figure it out myself, but it took so long. I have spoken to many coaches for women who have their own experiences and then help other women. And then of course, men too, with that, right? Finding their inner voice and then trying to figure out something is not right. And then kind of going down that path. What do you say to people who are maybe just at that point? where they kind of have that voice in their mind and they don't necessarily know if they need help. They don't know if something's wrong with them. They have a lot of inner turmoil basically going on and they're trying to find an answer, but they're having a difficult time. One of my like main pillars of health that I like to work with people on is community and, and building your tribe. I made the point earlier about we lose, we normalize our own circumstances and our own situation. So I always encourage people that I work with or anyone really to, or anybody that I can get in front of, just to say, find, you know, friends that you trust, people that you trust and share with them what you are going through so that you can have an objective person to say, oh, that doesn't sound normal. Just say, for example, I don't know, somebody wakes up every single morning with like this throbbing head and they're like, oh, well, this has always happened to me. This has happened to me for the last two years. So, you know, it just must just be what I do. Let's pop another ibuprofen or whatever it is. So, you know, to really just challenge yourself because you lose touch with what normal is. So your common symptoms on become your normality. Like, is this right? And like, should I be feeling like this? Like, does this happen to you? And the more people can start to talk about their own experience openly and build these open, trusting relationships with others, you can then support one another to seek help when something has gone too far for you. You know, I really do find lately, like there are just so many stories of people that get a, you know, a big C diagnosis 
Mm. And it's very often that they have been ignoring these symptoms that they've just normalized for themselves. So, you know, the more I just want people to have these conversations about their health and don't be embarrassed or shy. I'm South African, so I'm very direct. So, you know, in my social media posting, all of that, like I'm very direct and I'm, you know, encouraging people to look at their poo and to talk about what's going on for themselves because our body is giving us these signals all the time. And if we keep ignoring them, it's going to just get louder and louder and louder until you get potentially a very horrible diagnosis. Why do you think people choose to ignore maybe that inner voice or those symptoms that they feel and they don't do anything about it, whether seeing a doctor, getting a health coach, a nutritionist, whatever it be. It can potentially be different with the different sexes. So what I find with a lot of the women that, you know, I'm either friends with and wider networks with, or that I've worked with myself is that they put themselves way down on the priority list. So it just keeps on like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine until it's no longer fine. So that's, I think that's a key driver is that people just take for granted their health, you know, don't give it enough attention. And I think, you know, as you were saying earlier with men, I think it's perhaps it's the fear of looking under the hood, like, well, I'd rather just ignore it and like push it under the carpet because I just don't want to know what's, what that could mean, which is you know, I mean, it's very counterproductive. And also just people having the mindset that they are bulletproof. That's not going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what, it's just a, you know, it's just a bloated stomach. I'm like, you know, nothing's, just, I'm okay. So I think it can be a whole combination of things from how much they value their health versus how much they value themselves and the whole hierarchy of the family. Yeah. So it's a combination of things. And then there's, there often isn't the like the logical assessment of investment in health coach, which is, you know, obviously not covered by medical aid or anything like that. Investment in health coach, which would really educate me and reduce my risk of, you know, getting a diagnosis or whatever it may be versus just living the way that I am and then having to deal with the backlash of something. There isn't really that logical assessment in people's minds. It's just like, oh, I'm not spending that amount of money on a health coach. No, thanks. That's kind of where where it lands. I would say unless somebody is, um, unless health is a key value for someone. And it's going back to initially what you said, it's similar to denial. And denial is one of those things where we don't necessarily want to say, okay, this is a problem. If you have ever driven a car and maybe you have an older car, and it makes a weird noise. The first thing you're going to do is turn up the volume of your radio so you don't hear that noise anymore. Your car needs to be inspected. Once you get the car inspected, you might get a big bill and you're like, man, this bill is more than what I can afford right now or what I was expecting. I knew there was a problem, but I didn't know it was this bad. And looking at the body is similar to that. The body can be very quiet. The body can numb itself. So if we wake up every morning with a headache, as you said earlier, we might get used to it where it's like, oh, we have a back pain. Oh, just because I'm 50. Oh, my joints hurt. It's because I was always running. I, you know, I did track and field. I played sports. So we give ourselves a reason for the pain and then we validate it. But what that validation does is it takes away from us paying attention, similar to what you were saying on, we don't pay attention to ourselves sometimes. We just kind of put ourselves on a low priority, but everyone else is the regular priority. But we say, oh, you know, this is just where we are right now. This is where we are today. But I think there can be a better person that day. We can be a better version of ourselves. And I like to Think of it as what percent are you feeling today? Are you 50%? Are you 100%? And then kind of going from there. That's what I do. Now, I know there's other ways to think of it. Like, for example, filling your cup. The idea of filling your cup, making sure you take care of yourself first. And then after your cup is going to be overflowing. So that overflow, everyone that's around you can take from that. But you're not taking from yourselves. Many times people will give from their cup until that cup is empty. And then that's kind of leaves us at that low priority where many people are finally at that point where they're breaking down mentally or physically, and they're really having to deal with what's really going on. 
They're not happy anymore. They are not mm-hmm. filled with joy. They're not excited. Work is not the same. Family is not the same. There is a plethora of problems that need solutions. But then again, I think sometimes people are afraid to seek those solutions. And I know for me, when I started working with coaches, I started to see more advancement in my life because there are areas that whether I like it or not, I'm not going to openly just dive into. Now, eventually you get to that point where you're a little bit more brave. You're a little bit more aware. Initially, people, like you said, they don't want to look under the hood. And so they sweep everything under the rug and they hope that tomorrow's better, but it just keeps on getting worse until the point where something breaks and they say, I finally need some help. And they're not at that point. I don't think worried about the money. I don't think they're worried about the outcome. I think they're just worried about getting back to normal. You know, there's all of the tangible lifestyle factors of, you know, okay, so if you if you are very depleted, you know, you need more nutrient dense food, you need to adjust your movement, you need to move, but not too intensely, you need to breathe, like all of these things. But going back to your point, it's like, well, how did you get into this situation? And it's so often, you know, I think for women, you know, a friend of mine is going through this at the moment where she just continues to fall into these habits of just giving, 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 giving until there's literally like nothing left. And then she's like at breaking point. And she's been in this situation time and time again every new job that she's in she ends up in the same situation so gets back down to the mindset what are the and it often goes down to kind of core wounds that you have from a you know from your childhood of if you don't give then you may not be loved like it can actually get quite deep like around why you keep on your programming as one that actually jeopardizes your own well-being so much that you burn out like every year but I think somebody potentially has to go through that a few times before they are ready and willing to go down to that kind of deeper level because as you're saying that's that's the that's really that's really hard confronting work to do the kind of the deep the deep work but which is why I you know so I work with people over periods of three months you know, and I have people that just sign up and sign up again. And through that time together, we can get really comfortable and, you know, develop a very strong, close relationship whereby I can support them to go deeper because, you know, I, re- I really like that person going deeper with people to kind of show them that there is a better way and a way out just if you look at this in this particular way. So, yeah, that's really kind of where where one potentially needs to go if somebody just keeps on going back to a habit or a way of behaving that's not serving them. I like the three-month commitment for any coaching program. I do monthly coaching, so you can get one month of coaching, you can get one day of coaching. I tell people 90 days, give yourself 90 days to work on yourself, and then you're going to start to see a difference. Whether you see it or someone else sees it first, other people will see it first, but internally, you're going to see it first. And you might light up the world and people might say, you look different. You're glowing today. People are going to recognize that. And then you're going to become attracted to that because now you're looking better. You're feeling better. And the mind loves nothing more than to feel good. And I think sometimes we just feel bad and we think this is normal, but that is not normal. We should Mm -hmm. have some type of feeling of good, of worth. And I'm not saying that every day you're going to be 100%. My back might hurt today. Maybe I slept wrong. Maybe I was doing yard work and now my back has a little tweak in it. And so I have to go see the chiropractor or something like that. Things like that are going to happen. But we're talking about the constant flow of your life. If every single day you have something that is going to be constant, we can make a change. You can make a change. Sometimes it takes commitment. And commitment is one of those things that many people shy away from because it's difficult. I completely understand that in order to get something in your life, you have to commit to it and you have to stay focused. If I had to give myself steps, because I know health coaching and mindset coaching can be similar in certain areas, but there's going to be many areas where it differs. And if I had to separate it in just one step, 
the first step or the only step would be to believe in yourself. If I had to separate it in three steps, maybe the first step would be understanding where you are today. The next yeah. step would be maybe finding your reason why you want to make the change. And then the third step is creating a plan and then committing to it. So there's a process for your life, for the changes that you want. And of course, if you're listening to this, take some time to have some inner reflection. Ask yourself, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Are you going to be happy tomorrow? If you wake up in the morning and you have a headache, most people are going to say, I would rather not have a migraine in the morning. I remember when I was teaching, it was my, I think my second to last year, my teacher I was working with, she suffered from migraines. So she would just wake up in the morning and she had these splitting migraines and it's because of the lights. So the light mm -hmm. would just give her these migraines. And I remember there was a point where she couldn't come to school for, I believe like a week or two because these migraines were so bad and she just couldn't bear it. It was just like, the headache, right? Her head was just throbbing. Mm -hmm. So I was alone for those two weeks, taking care of the kids, not a problem. We get to that point where we have something wrong. And I think a lot of people, what they do when they get sick, it's like they always ask themselves or they say to themselves, oh, I can't wait to feel better, especially the common cold. If they get the common cold, they can't breathe. They are sniffling, <laughs> sneezing, coughing. And they're like, I can't wait to breathe again. I can't wait to taste my food again. And then they finally get to the point where they can't taste the food again, where they can breathe again. And they're kind of like, okay, well, whatever. And they just kind of go on. And then they kind of fall back to that mundane way of thinking and being. And I know when I help my clients, I am very attentive and them understanding awareness, being present in the moment. I know that's something that you do also with your health coaching. When someone is starting to look at their health, whether it be from day one or day 90, what is something that you tell them to look for? Whether it's like you wake up in the morning, you're full of energy, or at night, you can finally get some good sleep. And you're not suffering from insomnia. So I always like my clients to track their health symptoms and you know for the women who are still cycling to track to track their cycles so ultimately if they started working with me on day one they'd be tracking so whether they are suffering from you know sleep issues or constipation or joint pain or whatever it may be so they've got their symptoms and they're tracking them every day. So it's also things like, to your point, energy levels, the amount of movement that they're doing. So for me, having the data, although it is a little bit more time consuming, the only way you know whether your lifestyle is serving you or not serving you is by having the data. And our lives are so busy that you forget what's happened yesterday or the day before. And you kind of, you know, so I've worked with clients and I've been tracking their progress. And I say to them, so I'm like, it's amazing how well you're sleeping these days. When we first started working together, your sleep was terrible. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. And she totally forgotten that that's where we'd started. You know, the more I can get people, you know, obviously a lot of people have wearables now, their, their watches. So they're getting this feedback on their body all the time. But it's, it really is in like honestly assessing where you are to your point each day that you can then see whether your previous weeks or days choices from movement, nutrition, sleep, stress have impacted you today. So I think that's always a really important step to take if you're really wanting to see whether the effort you're putting in or you're slipping back into your own habits are having an impact on your health. I love the idea of just writing things down. So if I was working with you after our session, let's say we meet every Monday. And so on Wednesday, I feel a little bit lethargic. Maybe I feel unhappy. I feel like I, you know, have an upset tummy. And so I'll write these things down. And when I talk to you on Monday, I could say, hey, last week, Wednesday, I had all these things wrong with me, but I'm feeling better now. It could be an underlying issue where maybe on Tuesday, right after I'm done talking with you, maybe it comes back again. 
And maybe it's because of my habits. It may, you know, maybe every Tuesday or Wednesday, I say, you know, what? I don't have time because of work. So I'm going to go out and get some fast food. And I get mm -hmm. this fast food and it hurts my body in a way where now I'm having tummy problems. I don't have energy. I'm unhappy. We sometimes don't understand the power of food or just the power of being healthy. I know when I don't work out, I feel like something is wrong. And it's not because I need to work out. It's just that my body is so used to it. And my body likes to be active. And when I don't give my body the activity, it's like, hey, something is wrong and it's sending me signals, but I don't necessarily pay attention to them because it's like the only thing I didn't do was I didn't work out. But working out gives me something that if I didn't work out, I wouldn't have. It gives me more energy. And I know some people, they get into this mindset where they say, well, if I work out, I'm going to be more tired. And I find that to be false because working out is actually going to help your body become stronger. At that point, then you can heal quicker. You can do more in your days because we all have 24 hours in our days. What separates the people who do amazing things in our life to people who just kind of keep with the normal and the ordinary is how much energy they're able and willing to put out each of their days. So mm -hmm. if we're at that point where we don't know what's wrong, then we have to figure out what is wrong. And the best way to do that is by writing things down, because you are right. It's so much, especially in our world today, we have our smartphones. Our smartphones can instantly take us away from what we're supposed to be doing. For example, if you ever went to the grocery store about a grocery list, you're like, hmm, what do I need? Though you might just need milk, bread, and eggs, you might say, well, I really can't remember. So I'm just going to buy some chicken. I'm going to, oh, we, all, we, all, we, we also need to buy some snacks. So we're going to buy some snacks, whether it be pizza, chips, cakes, whatever it be. So we're giving ourselves all the things that we don't need rather than knowing what we do need. And when we write things down, we can really focus on the things that we do need. I love that about writing the things down. When you do that, you can focus. And I think when we can find a problem and focus on it, then we can start to really make some changes. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, it's all very much based on where somebody wants to go. So, you know, the key areas that they're tracking is you need your baseline and you've got your goal. So let's let's see how you're tracking towards that. Otherwise, we need to tweak and adjust because everybody is so bio-individual and your point around exercise is absolutely people need to be moving more, but actually it's, it needs, you have to meet them where they're at so that the exercise you're recommending for them doesn't leave them depleted. I think I was falling into the habit many years ago where I wasn't sleeping very well, but yet I was still running marathons and training like a crazy person. But that was too depleting for me. It's choosing the lifestyle that gives you energy versus sucking the life out of you. And I guess that's what it's, it's such a fine balance of working with people and understanding everything else that's going on in their lives and where you can meet them to make changes that are sustainable. And I want to talk to you about habit creation, because habits are one of those things that people might get into and then they fall out of. Great examples would be maybe they're in their 20s and they're going to CrossFit or they're doing marathons and they're doing all this. And then when they finally hit 30, they stop. And then they say, you know what? I'm going to start back, but now they're 35. So they start to get back to running and exercising, and maybe they do it for two months and they fall off again. And then they have this idea in their head. They're like, but I did it in my 20s. So why can't I do it now? It's the habit, right? It's the habit creation. And then also looking at where we were when we're 20 versus where we are when we're 35, our body changes. So maybe getting into a little bit about habit creation and then how our body shifts and then how we should mentally look at that shift and maybe not be so harsh on ourselves. Absolutely. And I think we get stuck in this. I've always done this. So I need to continue to always do that. But actually, like you were saying, like your whole life has changed by the time you, or potentially by the time you're 35 plus. So the amount of time that you have for exercise is less. You've got a million more balls that you're juggling if you've had children and now you've got a different job. Like there's just so much more on your, on your plate. And I think people set themselves up for failure because like, okay, well, I have to train for one hour 
every single day and otherwise it's there's no point so then you get into this all or nothing kind of mentality so I think it's almost people need to do a bit of a recalibration around like what is your goal like why do you want to exercise do you have mobility issues are you worried about the muscle loss as you age do you, you want to challenge yourself and do a, another marathon? And is that realistic? So it's going back to what is your goal in relation to whatever habit you're trying to implement in your life? And then looking realistically around how much time do I have and what's achievable? You know, so it's going back to the smart goals. You need to have goals that are realistic for you specific so that when you then implement a new exercise regime, it's one that you are going to be able to achieve and obviously with a bit of dedication and it's going to get you to the outcome, whether that's, you know, building muscle or, you know, injury prevention, whatever it may be. So I think it's really being realistic as to where you are in your life and what you want to achieve. That's, you know, really important. And the other thing is that we've slipped into this new way of being because our, our habits are really there to kind of protect us, you know, our body creates these, our brain, the connections that we make. So whether it's, you know, the, our habits around food, our habits or la- habits around movement or lack of movement are all kind of there p- to protect our status quo. So any change, even if it's one that's going to improve our health in the long term, can be met with resistance. So I think it's just understanding that and also getting into exercise in a way that brings you joy like you're never gonna do something if you absolutely hate every minute of it so if you're trying to implement a new exercise regime focus it on the stuff that brings you joy and you enjoy doing whether that's group fitness or so that you can get that habit back in place and then once that habit's in place you can then tweak the type of movement or whatever that you do And I always tell people, if you don't like to do something like a workout, for example, I'm not a big fan of running on the treadmill. Now I will do steady state incline, but when it comes to running on the treadmill, it's just something that doesn't appease me, but I Mm. can swim. I can go on the Stairmaster. I can go on the elliptical. I can go on the bike and those things I enjoy. And Mm. I think sometimes people think that if they work out, they have to follow like a certain type of workout plan that they found on the internet, or maybe their friend does but you should really look at yourself and say, okay, well, this is what I need. And just because you did it in the past doesn't necessarily mean that you're still going to like it because your body changes. You might have knee problems now that you're 35 and you might say running marathons is not exactly good for me, right? It it actually hurts me more than gives me joy and brings me joy, but you might find a new love in swimming. So you become a swimmer and you can swim laps and laps for hours at a time. And when you're done, yes, you had a great workout. You might be a little bit tired, but you feel a joy that you swam, that you got a good workout in. And the next day, you're going to find that you have more energy. I think when you can find that joy in your workout, whether it be walking around the block, walking on the beach, whatever you do to find that joy with some exercise to be more healthy, then you're going to have more energy. I know it's difficult to raise children. So if you have children that you're raising, or maybe if they're older, you still have obligations to yourself. I know it can be challenging if you have a younger child and they're crying and they're not really sleeping. And it's difficult because you're not getting adequate amounts of sleep and you're trying to make things work. Even when they grow up, now they're in their teens, maybe they're in sporting events. So now you have to use some of your time to go to to their sporting events, to their school parent-teacher conferences. It's kind of like an obligation until they finally fly the nest. But until that time, you still have to look at yourself. You still have to find what is going to energize you, what is going to fulfill you, what is going to bring you joy and happiness, but then also looking at how you can bring health back into your life. Share if you can. Health is one of those things that might be different for everyone. Some people might say, I'm healthy because I can run a mile without stopping. But some people might say that they're not healthy if they eat maybe fast food or they eat junk food. So they're like, oh, I'm being unhealthy. And I know there's a stigma on health. You have to have a certain body image, a six pack abs or something like that. Or you have to have a flat belly for women. I I know here in America, they have the magazines of the 
perfect image of a mm. person. And then people really get into that. But health is going to be different. And if you had to tell people what health was in a single definition, what would that be? So to me, health is having the energy and the drive and motivation to show up for the things that are important to you in life. So whether that is your family, your work, you know, if you have a love of horse riding, you know, being able to really show up and be there as opposed to just going through the motions. Like to me, that is the definition of health. Because I think when you've got all of those things in check, you know, the diet, the exercise, the stress management, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, success, mindset, supplementation, all of those, and you've kind of optimized those, you're going to consistently have the energy to engage in life the way that, that you want to. To your point around somebody who's got the six pack abs, but they are riddled with self-doubt, they're not going to be showing up to events and engaging with people in a way that they would really want to be engaging. But yet the person who maybe has the odd fast food meal, the rest of the time, they're really looking after themselves and optimizing all of it, the different lifestyle factors, they may be truly healthy. You look at that definition. So I really think that's kind of captures it for me. Why would someone choose a health coach or need a health coach? Very often people either know what they need to do, but they don't know how to start making change and want the accountability and guidance to get them to make the change. So there's like the one category of people and there's another category of person who is just confused. They don't know, they just don't feel the way that they want to feel in their bodies and they want to change and they just don't even know where or why. They've just got a collection of symptoms and they just want help and they probably try different things on their own and they're just ready to kind of be shown the way or to be given to be heard and to be given a different perspective. And I think a lot of people who come to me just haven't been heard, you know, by following traditional routes. You know, I'm an, an auditor by, by trade, so I, I leave no stone unturned. And I really love, you know, for people who've been trying many different avenues just to feel like there's no hope. I love working with them and going to the nth degree to turn over every stone to show them that there is a better way. It gives me <laughs> so much joy to, mm -hmm. to be able to help people who feel like they just have to live with these symptoms. And I'm a big believer in coaching. I'm a coach myself, hence the name Coaching in Session. That's the name of the podcast, where I bring on wonderful coaches like yourself, Cheryl, who can speak about the work that they do and then give people an understanding on the work they do and then also give them the information that they need for that change. So they might listen to this podcast and they say, you know, Cheryl's a wonderful person. I would love to reach out to her to see if we can work together. It's a huge thing to make sure that the personalities match. There's mm -hmm. been times when I've had people contact me and the personality wasn't a good fit. And it wasn't that they're a bad person. It wasn't that, that I didn't want them to be successful and want them to be good. It's just that our personalities weren't exactly in line. And I know I can't change the world by myself. So that's why I have wonderful coaches come on and explain the work that they do, because you might have a different personality than me. And that is perfectly fine, because I know that you being here, you're going to be able to help people just from after listening to this podcast. And I think that's so powerful and impactful for the people that are listening. And then of course, for you too, because then you get to feel that intrinsic help. And that's powerful, right? Just to know that the work you're doing is creating meaning in your life and in the world. So we go all the way past that. If I can from you, Cheryl, please share with us any last words and then please tell people where they can find you. So I guess my, my final words is that don't, don't settle when it comes to your health. If you are living in a way that you're just tolerating symptoms, and it may just be something small, leg cramps that don't go away, restless legs, like whatever it may be, like take some time to start understanding what you are tolerating in your life 
and know that there was always a way forward. You know, I offer everybody 30 minute free discovery sessions. So if you feel inclined, please do reach out to me and, and book in for that. I would love, I love chatting to anybody who is wanting to take their health to another level. So you can get hold of me. My website is ytvhealthcoaching.com and that stands for Your Tiny Voice. And my Instagram is Your Tiny Voice, same as Facebook. I'm much more active on Instagram though. And for any of your listeners, for any of the programs, you know, one-on-one -on -one group programs that I run, I will on a 10% discount. So just to mention that they heard me through your podcast. Perfect. And I will put all those descriptions in the box below. And I encourage everyone to check out her website to see what programs she is currently running and having for her clients. And I know that you're going to be in good hands. So reach out to her. And then from there, you can begin to get into a better, healthy body and a healthy mind. And that is what we all can ask for in our life. So I want to thank you so much, Cheryl Carroll, for coming on Coaching in Session. A great pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.